Join me, Mark Windows, for Windows on the World Live every Sunday, 9 to 11 p.m. GMT. Check out our archive and program stream at windowsontheworld.net. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Windows on the World. Yes, we're live. Yeah, the title of tonight's show is Rats That Rule the World. Just to take you back a few years before we get into the real meat and potatoes of what I'm going to be talking about tonight... The Club of Rome's first global revolution, which actually defined climate change as the new enemy of mankind. Therefore, the enemy of humanity itself was humanity itself. What a clever idea. Get us all under control and worshipping Mother Earth for the World Bank to control tax and monitors for life. Sounds like a very good investment plan. And... Yes, COVID-19 is a driver of that plan. This is what the first global revolution actually said. Interdependence amongst nations within a single planetary system is constantly growing. Yes, the borderless Pangea. The borderless Pangea, which we will not be able to explore anymore as the new normal after covid It carried on, focusing on issues, policies and options in a longer term perspective than is possible for governments, which respond to the immediate concerns of an insufficiently informed constituency. Of course, let's, well, let's decode it. Not of course, let's just decode it. That's easier, isn't it? It means that global governance is unstructured and will be implemented through NGOs, government organisations, yes, and of course the NGOs, non-government organisations, and the World Bank, the IMF, and all interested parties and stakeholders. What was being suggested was a new system more capable of managing a planet than any other system before. And when we start looking into this, it encapsulated the whole of the New Age movement. What's New Age got to do with COVID-19? Well, COVID-19 was a driver, is a driver. The New Age is a driver of change, global change. So, worship Gaia, give up all your rights and be genocided when necessary. That's the global action plan. They talked of interdependence amongst nations. And now we're going to talk about COVID-19, The Great Reset. Yes, this is actually a book by Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, and Thierry Malloré. They're both authors of this title. But COVID-19 is The Great Reset. And the World Economic Forum proudly sponsors COVID-19. Yes, they know how things will play out and what COVID is actually about. And they can't conceal the plans running alongside the biggest scam of the century. Klaus Schwab started the World Economic Forum and is also the author of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Yes, we're getting to the real reasons behind COVID. In his opening speech at the World Economic Forum recently, he stated that we do not, we do not yet know the final outcome. Well, they're working towards the final outcome in real time in this global exercise, which has been planned for some time through documents such as the 2017 document about spars, such as the uh, Rockefeller document of 2010, which we've been through and we might mention tonight. But that actually had four possible outcomes for a pandemic and lockstep was the favorite one lockstep is of course more top down totalitarian government but you've got to get the people to agree to it so you need a crisis and we're going to have many more well let's see what he says yes we do not yet know the final outcome well we don't but he does in fact we can find out because he's telling us his group of techno rats run the world They were on the World Bank, the IMF, and have every corporation in the palm of their hand. Every corporation that's going to survive, that is. Those who are not will be left behind. Those who are not in the palm of their hand will be left behind. Well, I, for one, am trying to get left behind. (laughs) The Climate Related Disclosures Fund, headed by World Bank 
an ex-Bank of England, Mark Carney, will force the deindustrialization talked about in Rio at the Rio conference in 1992 on every global corporation, the Climate Related Dis- Disclosures Fund. That's going to bring all corporations into line globally with the World Bank and the COVID Action Plan. Those who can afford to go along with it will multiply their profits and those who can't will be gone. There will be hostile takeovers and collapsing of corporations. Schwab states, that's Klaus Schwab, states this is not to be compared with the economic crisis of 10 years ago. This is correct as the world has now been fully taken by the techno pirates, all on the back of, well, nothing really. It's quite a coup, isn't it? Schwab states the effect will be more similar to world war. That's Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. You can look this up. This is what he says in the World Economic Forum, which was released recently. Look on their website. He says the effect will be more similar to world war. That's what we're facing. He says, look at the debt we are putting on our shoulders. Well, on whose shoulders, Klaus? He says 10 trillion will be added to our debt load. You mean No, you mean our debt load, not yours, don't you? That's right. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Just checking. He says, meaning, yes, yeah, yeah, not his or theirs. Yes, of course, yours. He says it is our debt load. Thanks, Klaus. He says it will be repaid by us and future generations. He states that 50% of the world population will be affected by COVID-19. And, of course, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which was yet another title which Klaus authored. So he's He's authored The Great Reset and The Fourth Industrial Revolution before that. Do you think he knows something? Do you think he knows something we don't? Well, actually, we can find out exactly what he knows because he's telling us. He describes the three R's. Restrain the virus. Oh, yes, Klaus, please restrain the virus. I mean, it'd be great if you restrained the bullshit. Well, that's not going to happen, is it? Recover. That's the second of the three R's. To go back to a kind of new normal. Now, this is kind of Orwellian doublespeak, isn't it? Go back to a kind of new normal. Interesting, eh? Interesting choice of words. Reset. That's the third of the three R's. Refine and define the strategy which should lead us in the after corona phase. So define the strategy which should lead us in the after corona phase. Well... You knew it wasn't going to last forever, didn't you? COVID-19 is a driver and drivers change. And this is all about change. Klaus says the world must be more resilient. He sounds like one of those drones who had its brain removed through sustainable development programs. But Klaus is a social engineer. They really are his words. Yes, these are his words. And he's sort of got authorship of them. So he's coming straight from the horse's mouth. Excuse me. Mm. Just having a coffee. His very own words, which disguise the horror of what is actually coming. He says people will demand more security. Well, the whole idea of the media is to beast the public into demanding more and more totalitarianism, more top down control, and putting an end to their rights. Well, actually, they will be steered into accepting more top-down control and the biometric monitoring, which will put them into physical, mental and financial slavery all through their own choice. It's clever, this, isn't it? But it's not that clever. In fact, a clever 10-year-old could see through this. But after 30 years of staring at a TV and reading the Globalist's action plan disguised, In simple word salad, every day of the week, in every publication, on every channel, the job is done. Education is complete when acceptance and repetition of simple but deceitful sound bites have been fully absorbed. They will be ditching their freedoms on behalf of their indoctrinators and accepting the offer of global health security. Have you heard about this? COVID-19 is a driver of global health security. Listen to some of our shows with Vicky Davis on republicbroadcasting.org, all available at windowsontheworld.net in the RBN archives section. We do two shows on RBN now. 
we do Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8pm UK time. Do join us. It's a lot of fun. Honest it is. It really is. <laughs> yeah, we do have fun on there, actually. Great callers, too. But every movement, every action will be monetized for taxation purposes. That's what this is all about. COVID is all about getting you, the dear listener, to accept more and more rationing slavery and taxation. And of course, an end to free movement and travel. Klaus emphasizes health security. Yes, tracking and monitoring of the World Bank's revenue stream. Well, that's you. It's a business plan. It's nothing personal, you know, but it does involve you. Riots and protests are all part of the plan to bring you greater security. So don't join in with those. Best to be flexible and move beyond what's actually being imposed. Be flexible in the moment and think. There are some people who can do this. And we're going to form our own little steering committees and our own underground groups. Oh, it sounds radical, doesn't it? Well, in times of deceit, there is a need to be radical. And I'm not talking about the revolutionary spirit. The great idea of revolution was invented for the very purpose of enabling the state to take more power. Look at the history of communism. I've been doing that recently, actually, and I'm going to do some shows on it because once you get this down to the sound bites, which are actually imposed on us every day of the week and use it back on the globalists and their sound bites, it starts to make a lot more sense. But Klaus tells us, that's Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum, he tells us that the next crisis is already waiting for us. How did you know that, Klaus? How did you know the next crisis is already waiting for us? Because they've already invented it. It's called climate change. They monetized it in 1992. Several billionaires were involved. Of course, Edmund de Rothschild, Maurice Strong, the IMF, the World Bank, the UN, the World Health Organization. Need I go on? Well... We could mention Bill and Melinda Gates, but they're drivers of the immunisation of the world. And that is part of the tracking and tracing agenda. So, yes, they really are all in it together, aren't they? Klaus tells us that his World Economic Forum has already warned the world about possible pandemics. Thanks, Klaus. What would we do without you? And, of course, your group of bankers, stakeholders and billionaire philanthropists. Don't you just love billionaire philanthropists? He says that we will fight the virus with the global fund and associations created in, guess where? Switzerland, I'm giving you a clue. They have one every year. Davos. Yeah, Davos. They go to Switzerland to plan your future. Covid will be carried on at the meetings in Switzerland. He clearly says so. So we know that the next crisis may be upon us. So we have to be prepared. Are you prepared for crisis after manufactured crisis? Get used to crisis. It's a word you're going to be seeing a lot. There is, of course, no crisis, only opportunity created through not so clever social engineers who have a long term plan to control and manage all infrastructure, finance and people for guess what? The common good. That's for the common good. Not for the good of anyone, but for the common good. It has to be made as though it looks like it's for the good of all. So everyone has to agree. Therefore, we have a communitarian agenda. Anyone outside the narrative is full of hate. There are right-wing extremists that think Elvis lived on a dark side of the moon. Haven't you noticed? Yes, the destruction of the Western industrial nations was always the goal of the UN and its billionaire bankers. Your slavery under techno rats. Yes, they describe this as a new social contract. They've got more front than Margate, really, haven't they? For our international listeners, Margate is an English seaside town on the coast of Kent. They want to integrate more inclusion. So Klaus says... They want to integrate more inclusion. That means that everyone's going to be included. You can't disagree. That's what he means. It means destroy anyone who opposes these enemies of everyone. So they want to destroy anyone who opposes the enemies of everyone. (laughs) Just made that up. I think it's quite apt, though, isn't it? Now we're going to get on to some 
Communitarian Press News. But first of all, I'm going to go through a couple more quotes from our dear friend Klaus, because he says that the social contract will be the green economy. Klaus Schwab published The Fourth Industrial Revolution and, of course, COVID-19, The Great Reset. So he does know a thing or two. But he says those technologies are much more advanced now. The technologies he's talking about. If you want to know what the future is, go to biometricupdate.com. Everything that's going to happen to you when you want to go anywhere is adequately described there. Heat sensors, bio vaccines, biometric vaccines, face scanners, all the rest of it. It's all there in horrifying detail and all described by people who are surfing the wave of COVID-19, to use their terminology. Everything which can be digitalised should be digitalised, says Klaus. Well, you're not digitalising my analogue stuff. I'm not having it. I'm not having it, Klaus. I like analogue sometimes. I don't like digital. Digital dies with every pulse. Analogue stays and resonates. <laughs> he says, the role of companies in post-COVID era shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism. In other words, what he's saying here is a global oligarchy that run everything. Everything will be a corporation. Now, this is where it gets interesting because if everything's a corporation, corporations are about money. And that means that we may be able to maybe take advantage of some of the inherent corruption which is in every corporation. Think about it. I'm going to give you some clues over the weeks to come, but not too many. But yes, the need for much stronger global cooperation, which means global totalitarianism. It doesn't mean cooperation. It means that you will have no choice. The globalists need the anti-globalists to steer their policies and protests. The anti-globalists don't know what they're doing, so they are steered into the agendas of the globalists. So expect more fake protest groups like Black Lives Matter, like Extinction Rebellion, to get us further on into the next crisis. COVID has shown us that we are globally interdependent, says Klaus. Well, these technocrats have been talking about this since the early 70s. And before, actually, if you go back to the technocracy movement of the 1930s. He says, we'll walk together to create a reset a social, economic and way of ecological thinking. He's not talking about ecology as in saving the trees and looking after the planet. He's talking about ecological thinking. In other words, United Nations Agenda 2030, restriction of access to everything and restriction of all rights and, of course, taxation and monitoring of everything in real time. And, of course, the universal credit scheme the global monitoring of every action online so that when the time comes and you've used up enough stuff, they'll cut you off and you'll be in poverty. You know that thing they used to call fuel poverty? That's what they want. They want fuel poverty for all. And they're going to say, you're being selfish and you're using too much. People like Al Gore are going to tell you, you're being selfish and you're using too much. Billionaires, people in Davos are going to tell you, that you're using too much. Have a look at their carbon footprint, compare it with yours, and have a little think about that. But he says uh, there's a World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders Summit. Useful idiots a go-go. And they say COVID-19 has highlighted the fact that our previous systems were neither equitable or sustainable. These people have had their brain removed brains removed well they've only got one brain probably between them because they are a hive mind after all and they've been injected with a word salad which they do not understand and have no idea of the true meaning of this is the nature of the occult everything is hidden from them but their actions reveal the puppet masters behind them the crisis also presented an opportunity, say the young global leaders who've been chosen by the billionaires. The crisis also presented an opportunity to reset and work towards a fairer, greener future. Well, fairer for who? 
It's not going to be fairer for you. It's not going to be fairer for me. Agenda 21 goals, more vaccination, absolute totalitarianism and no fun at all. Well, you can cycle and walk, but don't think of going anywhere. Let's now get into some communitarianism through the BBC. The BBC speaks on behalf of the global propaganda network of communitarian techno rats. Yes, those who steer public opinion and brought about the non-pandemic. Well, not many have had to die. Now, this is the point. Not many have really died. So they could have they could have brought in something more deadly. So they've got a lot in on the back of basically nothing when you think about it. It's been kind of very benevolent, this pandemic, because they could have killed billions, really. Not saying they're not going to. Not saying that we well, we know that they're going to lock us down again, don't. But um, if you look at what they've done to the travel industry, the our ability to move about, they've actually neutered the whole world over bugger all. Well done. Very clever, but not that clever. A 10-year-old kid could see through it, but there aren't many 10-year-old kids who don't watch TV and there aren't many 10-year-old kids who haven't already been programmed. What a shame. There are some, though. So to all you 10-year-olds out there, get thinking. <laughs> Not many have had to die, though. It's been relatively a non-event as far as the cover story goes. The real event, though, is ongoing and the real-time exercise that the world is in at the moment moves in the direction it is meant to by the steering committee, the global steering committee. Who are they? The World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates, the Imperial College, the Johns Hopkins University, the World Bank, the IMF, and every other paid agent, every other groveling snitch with their big nose in the trough whether they are in davos or next door to you they're all working and enabling for the great reset the most of them who are actually implementing this don't know what the hell they're even doing and they're the ones who are really dangerous they're in your local council you'll know who they are the we are the the yes yeah the we are all in it together communitarian press and its useful idiots, and even its borderline retards, are making sure that no one will be left behind. The need for a more authoritarian, top-down approach. Yeah, I thought about this, and actually I vocalised it earlier, didn't I? <laughs> Described in the scenarios for the future of technology and international development. Now, doesn't that sound like a really good idea? Think of that. Scenarios for the future of technology and international development. That sounds quite good, doesn't it? It sounds a bit corporate, but that's actually what this pandemic uh, rollout practice exercise um, in tabletop uh, fakery put out by the Rockefeller Foundation in 2010 is actually called the future of technology and international development. Yeah scenarios for indeed so the game plan of covid was nothing to do with the pandemic the globalists could have gone further and probably will with the second wave for now though the plans are being pushed through biometric vaccine id covid immunity certificates to be necessary for travel you can buy one for 129 quid you can go and test it but if you've had a common cold probably in the last year or six months it only, it's work it's only works on the dead cells it's not working looking for the virus well, you're going to find that you've got COVID and you can't go anywhere. So you need to know somebody. You need to start knowing a few of these people who are issued in these certificates. I'm not saying any more at the moment, but I think you know where I'm going with this. We're living in a global corruption, money laundering scam. But the world has been locked down basically by a handful of social engineers. Now, let's have a look at some of the technocrats steering the press. This is from the BBC. This is about getting the public to lobby for their own servitude. This is why anyone who watches television has a major problem. The government is being urged to get cars off the road, says the BBC, as traffic in Britain returns to levels seen before the coronavirus lockdown. Ah, we're going back to the old normal, not the new normal, are we? So traffic on the road is the old normal. And that's no good, is it? So the lockdown proved that there were too many cars. Oh, how useful is that? Enabling global governance. There were less people out during the enforced lockdown, of course, which was not a lockdown, as we know, but there was no need for one either. The steering groups on the communitarian press wrote the stories for the Global Action Plan as they were indoctrinated into the fake environmental steering group throughout their media exposure and in schools and universities and wherever they were trained. 
all these trained numpties on the BBC, they were trained. They don't have their own minds. They're not allowed to think. If you work for the BBC, you are not allowed to think. You're allowed to believe that you think, but you're not actually allowed to think. Big difference. It carries on between 87% and 105% of the usual amount of journeys for the time of year have happened in the past two weeks. Now, how are they managing to twist this? So they lock the country down. It goes back to basically uh, not even the new normal. We're getting back to where the old normal nearly was. And now that's all of a sudden a bad thing. It makes you wonder whether this pandemic was really about a very ineffectual uh, and not very good way of depopulation i think there was more to it wasn't there i think klaus schwab and the world economic forum i think they've been thinking about this for some time keep twisting the knife though into the last bastion of freedom private transport that is your last bastion of freedom once that goes you have nothing you have nowhere to go literally and that's what they're trying to do get you onto bikes so you can't go anywhere you can cycle round a smart city. Oh, what fun. Can't wait for that. The Lib Dems. Oh, I don't even know why they bother. But I suppose some people are mentally deficient. I mean, let's leave that for another time. I could go on about Lib Dems because I do know a few. They're the sort that say, I suppose you voted Trump. I bet you voted for Brexit. And yes, coming in at three this week, I suppose you think Elvis lives on the dark side of the moon. I'm sure they'll come up with another one soon, but not very soon. But basically, the Lib, Lib Dems said it was time to fundamentally, fundamentally, rethink transport and the Greens have warned of gridlock. Really? What? Well, there is gridlock on bikes. There's no doubt about that. But who put that into their empty craniums again? The communitarian change agents, and they don't even know it. Not a single original thought goes through a single brain cell of anyone in the Green Party. That's a fact. We've dealt with them. They can't even think. Well, they wouldn't be allowed to. The Association of British Drivers added that many people were using cars because they were still nervous about getting infected on trains and buses. Well, that's a fair comment, but that's hate speak, that, isn't it? Why are they encouraging free movement and cars? Boris Johnson has promised a green recovery, says the BBC, from the coronavirus pandemic. A green recovery. Why didn't he just say a recovery? I think there's something going on here, isn't there? Well, he should know. He isn't allowed to have an opinion on anything, as we all know. He hasn't had an opinion on anything since the beginning of COVID. Last month, it carries on, the Prime Minister said £2 billion would be spent on encouraging walking and cycling. Well, I've only been talking about this for the last 10 years. The, the walking and cycling agenda is all about trapping you in smart cities, getting you monitored onto the Internet of Things, and onto universal credit, so you don't have any money, so everyone's in poverty, and the globalists can go wherever they want because they're bringing back supersonic travel for themselves. Did you know that? Look it up. Yet, yeah. encouraging walking and cycling as part of an effort to improve health and fitness. No, it's not. And build on changes in transport during lockdown. Oh, that's more likely. Like it, yeah. Uh, a driver of the agenda. What a coincidence that these statements are exactly the same agenda as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals brought into action by multi-billionaires in the early 90s. Multi-billionaire criminals, shall I add, like Maurice Strong, who died in China after fleeing. He actually privatised the water under his 200,000-acre ranch and tried to basically ruin all the farmers in the area because he, he said it was his duty to bring about the destruction of Western industrialization. Yet he liked to profit of it, of it, you know, like a good globalist should. In April... It says, after restrictions on movement were imposed, journeys in motor vehicles dropped to 23% of the usual level in Britain. So what they're saying, we've all got to stay in and not go anywhere. I think that's what they are saying, isn't it? They have steadily increased, though, journeys since then. Well, they would really, wouldn't they? Because if you let people out of their houses, then some of them might get in their cars. It's kind of obvious. It says, but cycling has surged in popularity. Oh, dear. You can see what this is all about, can't you? 
even a 10-year-old can see this, hit in a peak of almost four times the usual level over the bank holiday weekend. It's truly appalling that at this late stage of human mental degeneration, cycling will be used to stop movement, thought and all individual freedom. Think about that. The bicycle should be a sign of freedom. It's now a sign of enslavement. This, it says, though, has since declined. So cycling slightly declined as people got in their cars, but is still well above the average, with critics of the government saying it must do more to get people on bikes. Who are these critics of the government? Are these these people who've had their craniums ripped open and two words put in called sustainable development and everything else removed? I think so. When these people had their brains removed, they went into politics, though. It carries on breathing fresher air and having more space on the roads for cycling was, for many, the only silver lining of the COVID-19 lockdown. Well, there was no COVID-19 lockdown, actually. They just said there was. If there was a lockdown, there would be troops on the street. They tried to bring in a bit of that, but it didn't work. They haven't had a lockdown. They've gone more draconian in Wales because they're using the communitarian press and the xenophobia of the locals to stop people moving about. Same in Scotland. But there hasn't been a lockdown. You know why? Because there aren't enough police, let alone army. I think the British army is down to about 9,000 in this country. Look it up. There is no way they can lock down this country. Unless, of course, they bring the UN in. But they'd need a real pandemic for that, wouldn't they? They'd have to make up something really good. You know all this um, talk of the alien invasion amongst the conspiracy theorists? I really wish they'd do that, because it'd be a bit of light relief now, wouldn't it? Operation Bluebeam, come on, give us something to look at. You know, it'd be fun, wouldn't it? However, let's get back to dreariness. She added that to get cars off the road... This is this Lib Dem lunatic. To get cars off the road, local authorities need to be given the power. I think they've already been given the power. And resources to adapt road layouts to create distinct cycle lanes separating cyclists from traffic. Well, you retard, they were given the money a long time ago. Why do you think that they're building 40-foot pavements? It's not because of COVID-19. They've been doing it for 15 years. COVID-19 is a driver to quicken the acceleration. This drone had the programme implanted through the instructions given to her on a daily basis by the simple and repetitive phrases of the great deceivers, the criminals and billionaires who are organising the global playground all for themselves. It carries on for Labour, shadow environment minister and <laughs> and and violent, yeah, shadow and violent minister, not environment. It's about environmentism, actually. Ruth Jones said it was concerning that pollution levels were rising. She called for an urgent inquiry into the combined impact of air pollution and COVID on, wait for it, wait for the big virtue signalling, lying, bullshit, deceptive nonsense, Asian and minority ethnic communities. You couldn't make up how vile, disgusting, inherently racist and privileged these arseholes really are. These drones need putting out of their misery as they are imposing totalitarian, top-down servitude. They should be ripped from public office, publicly humiliated, put into stocks. But unfortunately, the spineless British are going to go along with everything. Well, most of them. Not our dear listener, of course. Across Britain, it carries on, around a quarter of the usual number of train journeys are happening at the moment. Well, they can't have it always, can they? So they're basically saying they want everyone stuck at home, monitored on the internet, doing bugger all. That's what they want, because it's not about money. They don't need money. It's about getting you into debt. They need you to be in debt, but they certainly don't need money. Taxation is to keep you in servitude. (laughs) It says for bus journeys, about half the normal amount are happening in London and about two fifths elsewhere elsewhere in Britain. Well, that's because it's full of mask wearing dimwits. I mean, I haven't been on a bus, but that's because 
I was walking around London. I quite like walking around London. And the streets have been pretty busy, actually. So I don't know what they're talking about here. Because we are back to the old normal, but the new normal's coming. Well, it's not a new normal if you go in a pub, is it? Not a pub with track and trace. But I haven't been doing that because you don't have to go into a pub that's track and trace. Those drones with masks who are being authoritative on the door and saying, you know, we need your phone number, we need this, we need that, you need to tap in and, and scan yourself on your phone. Well, you don't have to go into those places. Let them go out of business. Okay, let's get on to real retards now. Yeah, they want everyone cycling. So is everyone riding about on a bike, virtue signalling in Lycra, doing the short journeys needed for the new global lockdown? Are they? Are they really? Well, the roads were pretty busy today. M2 was very heavily busy. In fact, well, actually, there was two inches of water in the Bow Underpass, which caused an hour-long traffic jam. That was a crisis. Can you see how easy it is to manufacture crisis now? Well, keeping apart from the fake greens is essential. Listen to this. Green Party transport spokesman Caroline Russell said public transport capacity is still much reduced from normal with the ongoing need to stay physically apart. Well, keeping apart from the fake greens is essential if you want to retain critical thinking. Never even sit next to one. Socially distance from all fake greens. She carries on. If just a fraction of the people who usually catch the bus or train get into a car, these traffic levels will quickly result in gridlock. Oh, no. And pollution spike. So it's crucial local authorities help people make local journeys on foot and bike. What do you mean help? What do you mean help people? You mean make people, don't you? You lying toe rag scumbag. You drone with no brain. You repeater of globalist word salad. So, it looks like only a mass call will rid the world of useful idiots. They are too far down the road to their own destruction to realise what the hell they're talking about. It carries on. The government is trialling the use of rental electronic scooters. Of course they are, because that's track and trace, which it says could reduce urban road congestion. So, what's that mean? Does that mean that... um, The entire stock of Tesco, Asda, Wait, Rose and Aldi is going to be delivered on electronic scooters. What the hell are you talking about? Which it says could reduce urban road congestion. Yeah, okay. Another way of restricting and controlling your movement, ready for the new carbon credits brought to you by croaking technorats like Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. But the Association of British Drivers spokesman Roger Lawson said everybody wants quieter roads, including drivers, but we disagree on how to do it. In many places, putting in cycle lanes has squeezed traffic and made congestion worse, which was exactly the point. I've been talking about this for 15 years. The idea of widening the pavements and putting huge cycle lanes in narrows roads which is the whole point you squeeze the road so there's more congestion so people start to form pressure groups to stop people driving cars or pressure groups are formed like mums for lungs these bunch of virtue signaling retards who are living in the cleanest boroughs ever in one of the cleanest cities in the world yes if you want to go to a polluted city go to china Go to India, go to Kathmandu, go to Beijing and then come back to your pedestrianised little smart drone environment and tell me that we have a pollution problem. Well, I would say grow up, but they never will. These people are retarded for life. But the AA said that despite... Traffic returning to near average levels overall. The situation was far from normal because more people were holidaying Britain during the pandemic. Of course, it's bloody holiday season. That's why they're also having a go in the communitarian press, Wales Live Online, which is run by Reach PLC, owned by the Express and Mirror Group, which is all about getting the public to police themselves. Look at any of those live publications. You'll have one in your area. Look at the stories that are making the public police themselves. So they're ganging up on anyone who's got a camper van and wants to camp out. They call it wild camping now. Remember that when it started to come in with wild swimming? Do you go wild swimming? Do you go wild, wild, wild in the country? 
I mean, what the bloody hell are these people talking about? Wild swimming. I mean, I've had my moments, but I'd say I'm rather restrained. I usually do breaststroke, you know. What the hell are they on about? But they call it wild camping, you see. This is all about the rewilding thing. It means that you shouldn't be in the country. So what they're trying to say is that they want everybody on monitored and controlled campsites. Well, what's the point of having a camper van if you go on one of them? What is the point? There is no point. The point of having a camper van is that you go where you want, when you want. That's the whole point of it. And they're now demonising people in camper vans and saying they're leaving behind loads of rubbish. Well, actually, people in camper vans very rarely do that because they often stay somewhere for a couple of days and they respect the countryside. I know hundreds of them and none of the people I know leave anything behind, including myself. I take it all with me. So these retards... And these virtue signalling communitarian numpties who live next door to you and are in every street in the UK and who are enabling these techno rats into taking away everything you've got and everything that you ever had. These are the people who are your enemy, the communitarian change agents, your neighbours, the do-gooders, the virtue signallers, the neoliberals, the fake lefties, the fake greens. These are your enemy. And with that in mind... I'm going to sign off. Do join us Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8pm at republicbroadcasting.org. And if you can, help us out on PayPal and Patreon. I do this full time and I'll be bringing you more good news. And some of it is good news, actually, because I feel more optimistic now than I have done for a very long time. I'll tell you why. Because what's coming in is an opportunity for people with a functioning brain cell to start using this new corporatized system to their own advantage, which could be to the advantage of real communities. Look up the definition of community, a group of people working together for a common aim. Oh, no, we can't call them communities anymore. That's the global action plan. We've got to be individual societies. (laughs) All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. And see you all soon on windows on the world remember the friday live streams are back we love doing them on friday on youtube while we're still there 9 30 p.m live every friday see you soon (laughs) 